tourism. He's been a senator for Tasmania since 1990, and the most difficult from Tasmania's northwest coast. Please join me in welcome. voting responsibilities, but I'll be here uh, for the uh, drinks when we close, so I'm pleased to catch up with um, any of you and have uh, any discussions or talks about the issues under consideration. So it's a pleasure to be here at the uh, closing session of the Australian Tourism Directions Conference for 2011. You've got a great deal of uh, expertise, all of it focused towards a single goal, enabling this industry to grow. There are a few other industries so closely linked with the government than tourism, with more than 90% of operators being small businesses. And I'll put my small business uh, hat on a little later with specific reference to one issue. Um, but it's left to the Commonwealth and state territory governments to become directly involved in promoting the industry as a whole. There's no altruistic motive here. Governments recognise that tourism's direct uh, GDP contribution to the Australian economy is immense. It's around $35 billion directly and $72 billion when direct and indirect contributions are combined. It's a major job creator. It is central, particularly central, to the welfare of regional Australia and a significant export earner. Employment in the tourism value chain is approximately 900,000 people, or 8% of the workforce, directly and indirectly employed in the industry. Promoting, excuse me, promoting is not just about marketing and definitely not about trying to pick winners. A couple of themes of my focus this afternoon, um, the admirable, admirable strength and um, versatility of the industry to survive during difficult times, and on plotting a steady course for the future, no matter what shocks are bound to hit us along the way. And my message remains the industry should focus on things it can influence and on the opportunities ahead. We need to make the industry more attractive to investors, to job seekers needed to meet tourism's demand for skills, and to take advantage of the new opportunities in, uh, in web-based design and distribution in particular which will be attached to the National Broadband Network. At today's conference, there are two major reports on the table on skills, Tourism Research Australia's The State of the Industry Report and the Deloitte Access Economics Report for the Labour and Skills Working Group, as in Derbyshire has mentioned in his talk previously. Skills are vital to tourism for growth and to help build the industry's resilience to shocks. And skills do not to wash away with flood waters or float off with volcanic ash clouds. When, when business returns, as it invariably does, it is the skills we've learned that help us to get back on our feet and give people the means to carry on. Within the State of the Industry Report, a single graph illustrates the point. In 2003, the global tourism market was affected by the SARS outbreak and the start of the war in Iraq. Visitor arrivals to Australia fell sharply, but pent-up demand remained, and by the start of 2004, there were even more international visitors coming through Australian airports than there were before these twin shocks. We hear a great deal about shocks to the tourism industry, and even talk of a constant shock syndrome. But as the State of Industry report suggests, business as usual would be a more useful description. After all, the industry is more closely entwined with global events than ever before. A long-term plan for resilience and skills at the heart of it is the best response to the inevitability of shocks. Even in the good times, the tourism industry has problems with skill gaps. The State of the Industry report reminds us jobs growth in tourism has been lagging other sectors of the economy, albeit slowly. Today we're getting a good sense of the scale of the workforce challenge from the report by Deloitte Access Economics and the Labor and Skills Working Group. The survey took in over 1,800 responses from tourism and hospitality businesses. It found the biggest labor force pressures were recruitment difficulties, 
faced by 57% of respondents. Skills deficiencies and retention difficulties were close behind. Both industry and government understand these pressures. Tourism directly employs about 1 in 20 of the Australian workforce. A recent tourism employment roundtable in Canberra discussed ways to improve performance in raising skills. They will support recruitment, retention, education and training in the industry. They will align with the government's uh, action on education, training and employment programs, especially those announced in the budget. There will also be a handy guide to training, pro training programs, as well as guidance on wage subsidies for the very long-term unemployed and those with a disability, guidance on sponsoring overseas workers for tourism and hospitality will be slimmed down to five pages. There will be information sessions for small businesses on navigating migration issues such as four, five, seven visas. Also at the round table, Martin Ferguson committed to working with other ministers to review the viability of expanding the working holiday visa program. The Labor and Skills Working Group, which includes the Australian Hotels Association, amongst other industry members, is channeling our ambitions for jobs growth. We are, for example, working with Service Skills Australia to implement the parts of the $558 million National Workforce Development Fund that apply to tourism. We've also sought a clearer picture of the skill shortages. We found there were over 35,000 unfilled vacancies in tourism and hospitality across Australia. And within four years, we estimate we'll need another 56,000 people to fill vacancies, half of them in skilled positions. The Digital Distribution Working Group is adding further value to the industry. It's helping develop ways to improve our online capability to create jobs and to make our attractions more competitive. Two thirds of international visitors to Australia use the internet before embarking. So it makes sense to offer them a full range, I emphasise full range, of online options, not simply information. I invite businesses to utilise the huge opportunities that will arise from the National Broadband Network. The NBN was the central theme of the Prime Minister's message for tourism at last, job, last week's Job Forum. As she said, we want to help tourism capitalise on the advantages the NBN will bring. Now, as a small business minister, I often make this point. Nine out of ten Australian businesses are connected to the internet. But unfortunately, only a third use it in any significant way as part of marketing, sales, distribution, or interacting with suppliers, governments, and authorities. Just one third. These uh, operators are at a tremendous disadvantage in today's world if they don't utilise this new technology effectively. Australian tourism operators do have a higher internet presence than other retail sectors, but their booking and payment capabilities still remain relatively low. Effectively, a business that does not use the internet in these effective ways is a one-way street. A one-way street with more and more business shifting away from them. They need to be two-way streets with business shifting towards them for at least holding the status quo. Without the uh, uptake and use of these uh, new technologies, uh, business is uh, at a tremendous commercial disadvantage. As I speak, there are people around the world logging into the internet, researching overseas holidays and booking travel and accommodation. Companies not investing in the full range of web capability will lose a large slice of this increasing, and it is increasing exponentially. It's increasing exponentially. The Digital Distribution Working Group is helping businesses take online capability to the next level, such as a real-time booking system. And I'm going to be pushing this objective forward as fast and as hard as possible. And the NBN will make it possible for Australian companies to deliver more sophisticated techniques, marketing and content on their websites. <laughs> We're already supporting small and medium businesses generally to take advantage of these uh, opportunities through our 12.4 million digital enterprise initiative. Now that's modest, in my view it's not enough. I urge business in the tourism sector to 
take advantage of these programs and those programs like it. As David Scalzel, President and CEO of World Travel and Tourism Council said this morning, that digital technology is key to marketing and distribution in the future. At the Prime Minister's specific request at the conclusion of the Jobs Forum, she's charged me to work further on ensuring tourism is ready to make uh, the most of the NBM. When we think of tourism skills, we often think of the most visible members of the workforce, such as hospitality staff or tour guides. Yet the ability to predict and capture investment opportunities will one, be one of the most sought after skills in the Australian tourism industry over the next decade. The industry is changing. Traditional markets are making way for emerging ones, and travellers from those emerging markets often want different things. Governments can buy a lot of data on investment. We can, we can say, for example, that China is likely to be our biggest market, some 900,000 visitors by the end of the decade. We can also point out that Australian hotels have the highest occupancy rate, rates in the advanced economic world, averaging 79% in Sydney, Perth and Melbourne in those cities. Government cannot go out there and find investors for each project, however. It's not its role. So if there's a premium on any single skill for the Australian tourism industry, it's the ability to take data like this and make a business case for potential investors. Investment is where we look to the private sector to step up to the plate. Investment in Australia's tourism infrastructure has been slower than investment elsewhere in the economy. With the exception of service departments, investment in accommodation in recent years has been more in refurbishment of existing stock, not in new stock. So there's a big task ahead, and again, the Australian Government is an important partner to have in this enterprise. And so the Investment Regulatory Reform Working Group aims to make business cases even better by removing some of the barriers to investment across the country. Uh, again, um, investment uh, funds management issues of the era had long, long ministerial and policy involvement and uh, I will be focusing, <coughs> focusing on this area as well. Uh, to conclude, as Martin Ferguson made clear in his opening remarks, partnerships are fundamental. They add value to the industry, especially one like tourism that reaches across so many economic sectors. I hope the conference has provided uh, and highlighted the importance of a cooperative approach in general and the closeness of the link between skills growth and resilience in particular. Uh, thank you and have a safe trip home.